guitar practice session 91324. These are basically just sloppy practice sessions where I'm trying to practice some of the more technical things that I'm currently working on, hoping the practice sections give me more of a routine, allowing me to verbalize what it is I'm trying to do, which hopefully will get it in my head better, possibly also be useful to other people working on similar things, also possibly allowing for feedback if anybody else sees a better way to do what I am doing. Here's gonna be uh, the typical worksheet I'll be using. The thing I typically do that might be different than other people is I try to make the worksheet where the low string is on top. So this is the heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling when you're actually playing the guitar so that we're imagining kind of we're behind the guitar so we can read it top to bottom, left to right in a similar format as though we are behind the guitar looking at the guitar basically top to bottom, left to right. And when I give the information or show my image of the guitar, it'll look like I'm left-handed for much of the presentation because once again, I would like you to see the information in the same orientation, top to bottom, uh, left to right. Uh, if anybody else thinks that these worksheets are, are useful, I do think that presenting things uh, is good just to learn it, even if no one else is you know watching it or anything like that. So uh, if you wanna use the worksheets, do whatever you wanna do with the worksheets, don't worry about plagiarizing or anything like that. You can you know, make your own you know, presentation stuff with, it, with them if you want to. I'll try to provide uh, those worksheets as well. So this time we're gonna go into, we're still on what I would call position number one, which you might also call the G-shape position if you're using a caged uh, shape position. Uh, uh, naming convention. You might also call it the Aeolian or minor mode shape if you're naming it by the first note that you're saying. I would also, you can call it what I would call mode number four, Aeolian or the or the minor mode. I'm going to, be, uh, I'm, and I'm going to be looking within there at the Mixolydian. So I'm going to be starting down here on the Mixolydian, which is a major mode, and it's basically the blues mode. So it's kind of like, I feel like it's like one of the basically the most interesting major modes and it's got that flat seven in it so uh, that's an interesting mode any case we're going to start uh, down here and we'll practice our intervals with it we'll practice the inverse intervals and then i went into uh, we'll count up and back on uh, the guitar and so similar to what we what, what i've been doing for the last couple days and then I just kind of try to mess around a little in uh, in the uh, mixolydian, but but I use I'm looking when I'm just playing when I started to just mess around. I'm thinking of myself typically in A major or A mixolydian instead of G mixolydian uh, because that's usually what I try to switch over to. It's not something. It's not the the key I play in most. I usually play in like minor keys because that's just the way I, I learned when I'm just messing around which like a minor G minor D minor but I've been messing around with the the blues uh, and there and there's a lot of different ways to think about how you're gonna go about playing like bluesy stuff you can think about yourself being in like the the normal position one shape but you're gonna twist it around so that it's kind of like in a mixolydian or major shape or you can have the three note per string uh, in your mind as you're playing it with like shuffle patterns or you could basically uh, think of yourself as being in the major scale but with a flat seven which would be like position two kind of but flat seven or you could think of yourself as in the mixolydian so I think the blues is actually pretty complicated to analyze because you, there's a lot of different angles that you can look at it in uh, which is kind of interesting so I was anyways I was kind of messing around here so I'm mainly playing I'm trying to play at least in <laughs> in an a major uh, or you can think of it as an a mixolydian and then I kind of and then I I've been thinking like I've been playing with that Spanish progression which is basically an a minor it's like a Spanish sounding progression but it has a an e major in it which kind of leads back to the a minor and within like the bluesy thing the mixolydian you can kind of mess around between a f a minor third and a major third as well as the major seven and flat seven is kind of like what you can play around with which means you can kind of switch back and forth between the major and the minor 
uh, or Mixolydian in minor, however you want to think about it. And so I was thinking that means that you should be able to switch between this kind of kind of uh, beboppy or or whatever bluesy thing to uh, uh, to this kind of Spanishy thing, which I would think would be kind of a I always thought that would be kind of an interesting combo. So I tried to do I tried to do that, and that's basically that's basically it. I, I don't think I was all that successful, but I was I keep practicing with it. It was kind of fun. Anyway. Oh, I also practice a few a few jokes that I've kind of been messing around with my joke writing thing. So if if uh, if they, if you feel like some of the jokes are are distasteful, I apologize for that. But I've been kind of I thought I'd just kind of throw those in there as well. So today I'm just looking at the same process. This time I'm on the mode which I'm calling absolute mode number five, which is the Mixolydian mode, kind of like the blues mode. It's going to be a major mode still going to be working in what i call position one which i can also call a g-shaped position if we're thinking of it in a caged shape because if i was looking at the related major which would be the ionian mode here then i can play that with this uh basically g shape which would be the open g shape if i was in the g position and open position i can also call this shape the uh, minor scale shape otherwise known as what I would call absolute mode number six or aeolian mode because I'm going to give absolute numbers to the modes based on as if I was counting from mode number one which would be the major scale so that I can use a little bit of math with the modes so and, and that's because if I start from the top of the scale here and were to play it out from the top note in the scale, it would be a minor mode, but I'm not playing the minor in it. We're playing the Mixolydian, which is a major mode, kind of like the blues major, you know, the major scale blues uh, mode. You could think of it. I sometimes think of it that way. So I'm going to play it down here, starting on the G. Uh, and so the first question then is going to be, well, how could I know uh, wh where the starting point is if I'm playing Mixolydian and I'm playing in the shape that's related to the minor mode? And I could say, well, if, if the minor mode is position number six with relation to the relative Ionian or major scale, uh, if I'm sorry, if the Aeolian mode is position number six, which is the minor scale, in relation to the major scale, I could start on that six and play through until I get to the Mixolydian position, which is position five, right? So I'm gonna play through from six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, and there's my G. So that's one uh, way I can think of it. I can also think of it, of course, well, what if I just find the C shape? Because the C shape is what I'm used to measuring things from, and then I can go to uh, the fifth from there. So if this, this is the sixth of a major because it's the Aeolian and I'm in the minor scale in essence, because that's what this shape is, I can go six, seven, eight, or one. That gets me to this C right here. That would be the relative major, which is in this box right there. And then I can just count up because I know that the Mixolydian is the fifth of the major scale uh, and and so I can just say, well, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And so I can basically I can uh, find it that way. So that's another way that I could look at it. Now, so now I'm going to say, okay, the other way I can see it is, w what if I just see where does the mixolydian lie in my shapes? So my shapes, I'm calling this a a double stop box. I'm sometimes calling this like a house over here, the little squares a house and then we've got the two note per string which i'm calling the meat of the hamburger which ties into my thinking of the pentatonic scale which i'll look at later and then i'm going into this bit right right here which is the the house or double or or box double stop but it's shifted up because of the there's been an earthquake i'm telling a story to myself because i think that helps with memorization and then i'm going to go to the bottom and now i'm on the double stop square which repeats up here, so it's the top of the double stop square. So where does the Mixolydian lie? Now notice that when we're looking before, the major scale is in the box. So the box is always the same. Here's the box, same box down here, except it's shifted because of the earthquake and there's been a kink in the tuning. 
But up here, the C is up here. I'm gonna call that the penthouse because C is what we usually think of as like the major mode or the mode we think about most. So I'm imagining it's looking forward on the guitar up towards this is like the ocean over here. So it has like an ocean view on the C's. And then the F uh, is is going to be uh, what did we, 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 we went to the F, which was the Lydian last time, uh, which is also a major mode. And so it's also in the front of the house, has looking towards the ocean, but it doesn't have as high a view as the sea. And then the miners are uh, behind it here. So, so we saw that behind it, I went to last time, the, uh, the Dorian is actually over here, but the Phrygian uh, was over here. So the Phrygian is bottom floor behind it, doesn't have the ocean view. It's looking basically the other way. And this is going to be the Locrian, uh, which is which is going to right be right behind the C. So now I'm on the Mixolydian. So the Mixolydian, and be, even though it's a major mode in my story here, it doesn't hang out like in C's penthouse over here because it's got a flat seven, and it's like bluesy, so it's like cool, and it, so it hangs out more like with the minor people. So it hangs out in the in in the minor area. So that means that's why it's going to be here in its own like little flat with just the one story building next to this one is the minor mode. And so here's the start of the Mixolydian. And then the other place it's at is in the double. So it's at the bottom of the double stop because, you know, like these these two got their own place. Uh, and, and so now they're so so now it's in the double stop and it's in the little flat. So it's going to be part of the hamburger, left hand side of the meat of the hamburger. And then when you have the square double stop, it's at the bottom of the double stop. So there's my story so far. I'm still kind of shaky. Still, I'm going to add to it as we go. So that means we're here and then we're here. Noting to get to the octave, I've got to reach up further than I normally would think because of the kink in the tuning that right there. So usually you would think uh, it would be here to here, but it's going to be here to here to get to the octave up. So there is that. And then I can think, okay, what if I started this shape from the top? See, now I'm on the left and I'm going to the right. What if this was the top string? I could find it on the top string because I might know my top strings better. And I could say, okay, what if I found it on my top string? Then I'd have this position right here. What is that position? It's going to be, this is what I would call uh, position number five, which could also be called, and I just generically call it that because I start with this position as number one. And if you count through the five positions, this would be the last position, number five, that goes around like in a circle. And then we get repeating to number one. So the position behind it would be number five in my thinking and not just my thinking. Many people do that. But so you might also call it an A shape if you're using the cage system because if you look at the related major, which is the C here, you'd have this A shape that looks like that, which is our bar chord, which is basically taking your A shape here, which would be an A, but here it's gonna be a C and barring it off. So instead of doing this, so you could name the shape after that, if you're using the caged system, you also just might call this shape a mixolydian shape, because if we were to play it from the top, then if from the first note in it, it would be a mixolydian uh, that we'd be playing in the key of the mixolydian. So if I looked at it from there, I might know this shape better and I could say, okay, yeah, this is shape number five and it would look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if I did that same thing over here, it's the same thing, except I have to deal with the kink in the tuning. So if I started down here, I could think that's one way I could think of it. It's like, well, this is like I was playing position number five. If it was the top string, but it's down here. And so let's just take, let's just analyze it a little bit. We're gonna have then, let's take this down and say, what do we have? We've got, we've got the two note per string, what I call hamburger, the flat, boom, boom. And then we got the top of what I call the house or square double stop, which is gonna be back here, doot, doot, doot. And then it's shifted up because of the kink in the tuning. So that's why this square is shifted like that. So that's where the earthquake happened. Doot, doot, doot. Shifted the foundation 
but that's okay. And then, uh, and there, and there we is. There's going to be the one octave of it. So if I was to count that up from here, I'm going to say this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where's the funny octave here? It's on the seven. And this is why I always remember this one as like the bluesy scale. And the bluesy thing is really pretty interesting and actually quite difficult once you kind of break it down, which is kind of funny because a lot of people think that the bluesy thing is supposed to be easy. Uh, but when you start to look at it, it's like, because some people look at it, the, the blues thing, it seems to me, and I'm just trying to work this out in my own mind, so this is just me rambling to try to figure this out, but so, you know, if, to me, a lot of people try to think of the blues as though they're playing like uh, you know, a pentatonic shape here, which is usually, would be an A minor, right? That would be an A minor shape. And then, but then they adjust it to the, to the blues uh, which means that you're going to adjust the notes that you that you need to bend, bending like this note and this note, right? So, and, so, and that's basically where you're going to get that flat, uh, and that's where you get that that flat seven or or my or the minor seven, uh, which it would be a major if it was a major scale. So that's one way you can think of it, and also gives you the, the bending opportunities. Uh, at those points, and that's kind of funny too, because then, uh, if you're thinking about this as low as low, it's like position two. Then, then you would kind of have position one back here, which would be like the same shape. <laughs> but then you, but then you're thinking about this shape as though you're going to uh, have a have a flat seven uh, in this shape. So then you can kind of change this shape. You can also think of it like like you're in the mixolydian, which is the mode that has the flat seven in it, which means that instead of thinking about this as though uh, uh, I'm in position one, I'm thinking as though I'm like looking at the major scale as though I'm looking at an A, because usually when I when I play it, I think of the blues. Uh, in A or E usually, but I usually play it in A, so I'm not thinking of it in G right now. I'm thinking A minor versus A major, right? So if I was playing an A major blues, I still might think about this as a this shape, which is an A minor shape, and then bend the notes that I need that I need to to distort it into like a blues shape or and then and if I did that for here making this like thinking of this as an A major but I'm using the A minor shape then I can all then I would have the actual same shape back here that I could use but then I would be adjusting the seventh adjusting the set so that seems to be one way people kind of think of it and then another way a lot of people seem to th think of it is is with this three note per string shapes, which I'll get into. I'll try to wrap my mind around more, you know, formally later. But that's when you get to this Ricci stuff. So so then you're so then if you're reaching like that, then you're probably thinking of it not so much in these tighter shapes that we're looking at with five five shapes across this fretboard, but in three note per string shapes, which means you're, that's when you need the wider hands so you can kind of, and the, maybe your neck up here that I was talking about a couple days ago. That's what, one of the reasons I was kind of experimenting with that to try to reach beyond the, the five frets that we normally kind of work in. You have everything you need in five frets, but when you reach beyond, you can do kind of different things. So that's the other thing way you can think about it and then of course you can think about it as though you're playing in the 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 mixolydian mode which means if i was in the key of a here i would use that position i believe position number five right so then i could just play position five here and it already flats the seven but you get a different kind of feel if you're not like thinking of it like this way and then you're and then you're bending things into the scene so it's, it's actually somewhat 
it's pretty complicated all the different ways people seem to approach the this here uh and when you try to think about it but we're and if we're on the g it would be the same thing for the g so if i was to play here's the g on the top string i could do that same shuffle pattern it's hard to reach the seven so, you know it's hard to reach that so that so on the, it's a lot easier to reach it here and even easier if you if you use the pattern uh, up here a little bit and then you know the same kind of thing here but we're looking at the the mixolydian within position one which would be starting on the g okay so so that's going to be the idea all right so so that was that and then so it has the flat seven so let's just look at that if i was to count these out i'm going to say all right what does that mean what does that even mean man Let's check it out. We're gonna say this is gonna be the the first to the second of the mixolydian is a flat. Let's just put this over here. To, to, what am I talking about? Flat. The, okay, so the first to the second of the mixolydian is a two note away uh, major second, or let's just say it's a whole step. So it's a whole step to the second. So from the second to the third is going to be of the mixolydian is a whole step from the third to the fourth we're going to get a half step this is the same process as the major thus far from the fourth to the fifth we're going to get a whole step boom and from the fifth to the sixth we're going to get a whole step uh, which is going to be boom and then from the sixth to the seventh there's the funny one you get the half step from the six to the seven, which is usually a whole step. So to here, and that means you have to take a whole step from going to seven to eight or back to one, which is weird because I don't get that leading tone. So the mixolydian is the one major mode that doesn't have the leading tone that usually is a half step going up to the, to the, to the back to the scale because it's got this difference. So that means that you're gonna have a difference from the major going into the funny one there's only one funny uh, uh, interval. The one funny interval is always going to result in a differentiation from its related scale, whether it be major or minor, in this case major, going into it. So we have a different note uh, going, uh, going into that uh, funny octave here, and then, uh, and then a funny one going out of it that's different, and then everything else is the same when we compare it to its relative major. So that's the only difference to the relative major. And so that is that. I think I already counted, I already counted out. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now let's look at the, let's look at the intervals then. So now I'm gonna say intervals. I'm gonna try a joke out here. I'm gonna. I'm finally, I'm actually coming clean, people. I'm coming clean, people. And I, and I think it's because my, my dishwasher's rinse cycle's not working. You know, because I'm not only coming clean, but I'm also, it's also lemon scented. Okay, that, was, that wasn't good. I've been practicing. I think I need a better delivery on it. I need a better intro into it. Anyways, we're going to go into this. Let's say this is going to be the second so the second of the mixolydian is going to be a two note away major second two note away major second so it goes dun, dun. and then the inverse of that is going to be 12 minus 2 which is a 10 note away uh minor 7 so the major the inverse is always minor or pretty much always i believe it's always minor so we got if i go this way from the g to the a two note away major second going from the a to the G, 10 note away, minor 7. How do I know it's 10 notes away? Well, if I count out from, from like this A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're seeing it linearly here, but if it was in a circle, then, then we could see it just going around in you know the circle. All right, so then I'm going to go to the next one and say now I'm on the third. The third of the mixolydian, uh, because it's a major mode, it will be defined as having a four note away major third. 
four note away major third. The inverse of that is 12 minus four, which is an eight note away minor uh, sixth. So if I went from G, so I can count that up by the way, by saying this string to this, to this one is five notes away. And then back to here would be four notes away. And there's the four notes. So if I went from here to here, G to B, that's a four note away major third. If I went from B to G, eight note away uh, minor sixth. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the third or the fourth of the mixolydian. So I'm starting to memorize this shape. Should start to be recognizable going from top to bottom. That would be a five note away perfect fourth. I can see it's five notes away because there's five notes between the strings uh, by default. And, and then I can say, well, the inverse of that would be 12 minus five or, or seven note away perfect uh, fifth. And therefore the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth I know are inverses of each other, which is nice to know, except it's also funny because the five note away perfect fourth and then there's a, a seven note away perfect fifth, those two fives are easy to get mixed up and I work on not mixing them up. So if I go this way, G to C, that's gonna be a five note away perfect fourth. If I go from the bottom to the top, C to G, measuring from the C, seven note away perfect fifth. All right, and then if I go to then the next one, which if I go to the fifth of the mixolydian, the fifth of the mixolydian, like the major, is like most modes, a seven note away perfect fifth. Seven note away perfect fifth, power chord, shape, and uh, I know it's a, it's seven notes away because it goes five notes here, six, seven. The inverse of that would have be 12 minus seven, which is five, which would be a five note away perfect fourth because the perfects are inverses of each other. So if I go from the power chord, power chord, G to D, that's a seven, that's a that's a seven note away perfect fifth. If I went from D to G, that's going to be a five note away perfect fourth. All right, now we're going to go to the sixth. The sixth is going to be down here, and this is going to be boom. Now this crosses over the kink in the tuning, so you would think the sixth normally, if it was a major six, nine note would be like this back here, one. But no, the kink of the tuning brings it up here, which makes it look like it's like a minor, like a like a ten note away minor seven. But no, it's the kink in the tuning, which has now that we have to account for. We have to account for that. So that's going to be. I know that the sixth of the mixolydian is a uh, nine note away major sixth, and I can count that by saying. This is five notes, and then not 10 here, but 10 up here because of the kink of the tuning, back to nine. Nine note away major six. The inverse of that is 12 minus nine, which is three. Three note away minor third, noting that a major has an inverse typically of a minor. So if I go from G to E, that's gonna be a nine note away major six. If I went from the E to the G, that would be a uh, three note away uh, minor third. My back is hurting. I wish I had my pillow. I could really use my pillow right now, but some somebody stole it. Someone stole my pillow. They needed that $14. They needed that $14 pillow. Crying out loud. I, I still think, I still think Amazon's in on it. They've got a repurchase scheme with the pirates, Amazon cartel is tell they ship things out, and then they tell the pirates to take it and then sell it back to them. Because who would want who would want someone else's fourteen dollar pillow for crying out loud? Like, what are you even gonna what are you even what are you even gonna do with it? You know, like what are you even gonna? Who cares? Whatever, dude. Anyways, this one's. This one's the seventh. This is going to be a 10 note away minor seven. <laughs> usually, usually it would be back here, but it's been shifted up uh, because of the kink in the tuning. And we know we can see that because this is going to be five and 10. 
and the inverse of that would be 12 minus 10, which would be two, which would be a two note away major second. So if I went from the G to the F, that's a, set, that's a 10 note away minor seven. If I went from F to G, two note away major second. And then we get back to the octave, back to the octave, 12 note away octave, which looks a little bit further out because usually you would be going to here. So when you're trying to find your 12 note away octave, again, the kink in the tuning makes you go out to there instead of from here to here, doo -doo, have to go to there. Okay. You know, music is a luxury because like I prefer to be safe and sound, but you know, if I had to negotiate, I would, I would let go of the sound part and keep the safe bit, right? I mean, I prefer to have both safe and sound, but, but if push comes to shove, then I would go with the safe over the sound. Okay, that's my other, I need to work on that one. All right, let's go back, let's, let's go back the other way. I'm going back the other way now. So now we're going from here back and do our intervals in reverse comparing to this one, which is kind of backwards, but if you think of it as a circle, it should still work. So then we're gonna go here to here, here back. So we know that the seventh is gonna be behind it. The seventh is a 10 note away minor seven. So doo -doo. now how do we know it's a 10 note away minor seven? Well, I could count it up, but one way I can think about it is to say, uh, I, I could say, well, the distance between these two is two, which would be a two note away major second, T 12 minus two, the inverse would be a 10 note away, which would be a minor seventh. So if I went from G to uh, F, or let's do it, if I went from like we would normally go F to G, it would be a two note away major second. But if I went from G to F, which is what we're thinking here, that would be a 10 note away minor seven. All right, let's go back down from the seventh to the sixth, seventh to the sixth. So that's going to be for the mixolydian. The sixth is a major sixth. Everything else is just like the major. So all the ma all the majors, everything that's not a perfect is going to be a major, right? Because that's how it is in the major. So that's going to be the major six. And so how do I know that? Because I can see there's a distance here of one, two, three. That would be a minor third. 12 minus three would be uh, uh, nine, and that would be the nine note away major six. So if I went from the E to the G, which is how we would normally think of it like that, that would be a, a three note away minor third. But if we think of it going from the G back to the E, that's gonna be a nine note away in major six. All right, let's go from the six back to the four, to the fifth, and say the fifth is gonna be right there. And if there's a kink in the tuning here, so that's why the fifth uh, is staggered. Usually it would be right above, but it's gonna be back. So if I'm going from bottom to the top, usually the fifth is right, right above it, but this one, the bottom has been shifted to the right. Therefore the top is gonna be back one now. So I'm gonna say, all right, and I can, I can count that because if I went this way, because of the shift, that would be five, a distance of five. And I know that 12 minus five is seven. So therefore from G to D, that would be a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I went this way from D to G, which is the normal way we would think of going, that would be a five note away uh, perfect fourth. But if I went from G to D, that would be a seven note away perfect fifth. All right, let's go back to the last one. And then we're gonna go here. So this is gonna be the perfect fourth. And so I know that's, it's a, it's a, it's a five note away perfect fourth because that's what the fourth is in a mixolydian scale. I can count it up by saying this goes to five, six, uh, seven. So if I went from here to here to be a seven note away perfect fifth, 12 minus seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is five. And so, so that's where we get the, the five note away perfect fourth. So if I started from the C to the G, measuring from the C like we normally would, that would be a seven note away perfect fifth. 
but if I went from the G down here to the, 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 the C, that would be a four note away perfect fourth. This, by the way, is basically kind of like our power chord if I was starting from C, but it's a little bit one octave or one note up because of the kink and the tuning, of course. So now we're gonna go to the third, the third of the mixolydian, the defining note of uh, the mixolydian is a uh, minor, a major third. So let me think about this for a second. Uh, what happened here? Where was I? We were on, oh no. Oh no. Control here, I, I was here on the C. I'm going back the wrong way. What did I just do? You're going the wrong way, man. You're going the wrong way. Okay, I get a little turned around sometimes. It's okay, I'm back on the track. Going the right way now. So now this is gonna be the defining characteristics of a major mode has a major third, four note away major third. How do I know that? Well, from here to here is five, six, seven, eight. So that would be an eight note away uh, uh, minor sixth. So 12 minus eight, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is a four note away major third. So if I went from this B to the G, that would be an eight note away minor six. But if I went from the G to the B, that would be a four note away major third. All right, let's go to the second then. Back to the second, I'm measuring to this G, not to that G. So I'm measuring from down here to this uh, A now. And so that's gonna be, we know that the, the second of a mixolydian is a two note away uh, major second. I could see that because if I measured from the A, it'd be five, 10. That would be a 10 note away uh, that would be a 10 note away, which is a minor seven. 12 minus 10 is two. And so if I went this way, it'd be a two note away major second. So if I measure, so if I went from the A to the G, the shape would be a 10 note away minor seven. But if I went from the G to the A, we're talking two note away, two note away uh, major uh, second. Okay. You know, I like to listen to river sounds in the background for background noise, but I listen to them live stream, live stream, you know. I don't listen to pre-recorded river sounds. Pre-recorded river sounds are for losers. I only listen, I only listen to, to live stream river sounds. Anyway, I don't know why. But let's go to the let's go to the next one. I'm going to start on this G now and go around the horn up to this one. So now we're going to go. All right. So let's go to here. And so this one. So so where am I starting at? We're starting at the bottom of the square or house double stop, which has been shifted up because of the earthquake down here. And then we go to what I'm calling the top of the double top square, which you can see up top, because this is the same as the one up top, boom. And then that repeats up top, so we're still at the double stop square, boom, boom, boom. And then we're at the bottom of what I call the double stop square, boom, boom, boom. And then we're back home. All right, so let's do that. Let's count it out. So we'll say this is gonna be one, two, three, four, and then it repeats, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so then let's go ahead and just look at our intervals down at this part of the guitar. And so now I'm gonna say this G to here, what is that? Uh, that's going to be our second. It's a two note away uh, major second, like normal. So, ba boom. And I know that because I can say, well, going from here to here would be five. Uh, going, no, from here to here. There's no kink in the tuning between these two. So, five, four, three, two. 
2 note away major second. 12 minus 2 is 10. The inverse of a ma of 2 note away major second is a 10 note away uh, ma minor seventh. So if I went from G to A, the normal way, 2 note away major second, that's that shape. Going back from A to G would be the inverse, which is a 10 note away minor seventh. All right, let's go to the third. The third of a mixolydian, it being a major mode. By the way, I've also been, I should have been doing like my modes. So, so the mode, the mixolydian mode is, mixolydian is the fifth of the major scale. So I'm going to label it mode number five. And that means it's four notes down from its related major or Ionian mode. Therefore, I can add four to every relative position to the mixolydian to get to the relative absolute mode number. So if I'm on, if I'm on the second of mode number five mixolydian, I could say two plus four, not five, but four because it's four steps away from the top point. So two plus four is, is six, and that means that this is an aeolian. So the second of mode five mixolydian is mode six, the aeolian, which is the minor mode. And then if I, so now I'm going to the third. So if I go to the third, then I can also say, well, the third of mode five mixolydian is going to be three plus four or plus five minus one, however you want to think about it. So four, five, six, seven, that's going to be mode number seven, which is the Locrian mode. And again, some people might balk at calling it mode number seven because they're going to say, well, it's all relative and whatnot. But again, I'm making absolute numbers, tying it out to the key of the major scale because that just makes sense to do to orientate us because we usually think of that as the major scale. All right. And so we tie everything out to that. That's the key. That's our that's our that's our comparison key. So that's our tabla rosa tabla tabla that rock that help people figure out different languages. So this is going to be the, the major third then defining characteristic of the major mode. And we know that if it was 12 minus the four note away major third would be 12 minus four or eight. And that's going to be then a eight note away, which would be a minor sixth. So if I go from the G to the B, that is a uh, four note away major third going from B to G. That's an eight note away uh, minor sixth. So then we go to the fourth, the fourth, and the fourth of mode number five mixolydian is going to be four pl plus four, which is eight. There's only seven modes. So eight minus seven is one. Mode one is Ionian, otherwise known as the major scale. So, so, so that's going to be, if I started from here, in other words, I'd be playing in the major or Ionian mode. So then I'm going to go from... Uh, so we know that the fourth of the mixolydian is a five note away perfect fourth. I can see that because just the distance between these two strings is five. The inverse of that would be 12 minus five or seven, which would be a seven note away perfect fifth. Again, the perfects are inverses of each other. So going from G to C, that's a five note away perfect fourth. Going from C to, to G, that, that would be a seven note away perfect fifth. Now let's go to the fit. Well, no, let's go. Let's repeat this process up here. So now I'm comparing this G, not this G. So I'm going to skip an interval and try to look at the intervals that are more than an octave apart to see those shapes that are in the same place. This helps us to analyze chords. I usually would be measuring from the top to the bottom, but I'm going to primarily look from the top bottom to the top. That's what I'm trying to find but we'll look at it both ways, right? So we're going to say, all right, so if, if I repeat this, I go back to the second, which is an A, and I compare it to this, that shape. What is that? If I reached up to that, that right there, we know, well, it's the second. That means it's a two note away major second. How can I prove that? Well, if I was comparing to the A, it would be 5, 10, 15, and then 20 up here. 21, 22, 
there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet, so 22 minus 12 uh, would be 10. 22 minus 12 uh, would be 10, I believe. And so that would be a 10 note away minor seven. So if I went from here to here, 10 note away minor seven, the inverse of that would be 12 minus 10, which would be two. And that would be our two note away uh, major second. So if I went, if I measured it from top to bottom, like we normally would that shape, 10 note away minor seven. If I went the other way, therefore, that would be a two note away major second. All right, and then if I went to this one, which is the third, I know the third of the Mixolydian is a uh, <laughs> a three a four note away major third defining characteristic, and I can prove that by saying, well, if I go this way from the B, it's going to be five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Twenty minus twelve is basically ten minus two or eight. And that would be an eight note away, uh, which would be a minor sixth. And 12 minus eight is four, and that's how I get to the four note away major third. So if I look at this shape from here, from the B, eight note away minor six. But if I went from here to here, from G to B, four note away, uh, major third. I hope I got that right. I think I did. Then I'm going to go to here and say, okay, this one is the perfect fifth. Perfect fifth of the Mixolydian is, of course, a f I'm sorry, the perfect fourth. Perfect fourth. The fourth of a Mixolydian is a perfect fourth, which is a five note away perfect fourth. I can prove that by saying if I measured this way, it would be 5, 10, 15, 20, minus 1 would be 19. 12 notes in the alphabet, so 19 minus 12, which would be 9 minus 2, 9, 8, 7. Therefore, this would be a 7 note away, which would be a perfect fifth. 12 minus 7, which would be 5, and that's where I get to the 5 note away perfect fourth. So if I see this shape from C, measuring it from C, which we would normally do, that would be a 7 note away perfect fifth. But if I measured it the other way, therefore, it would be the inverse, which would be a five note away perfect fourth going from G to C. All right, now let's go to the uh, fifth. So here's our fifth. I'm looking at this D, measuring it to here. And I know that if it's, the, if it's the fifth, it should be a seven note away perfect fifth. How can I prove that? Well, this is gonna be if I measured down this way from the D, five, 10, and then 15 because of the kink, 16, 17. 17 minus 12 notes in the alphabet is basically seven minus two, seven, uh, six, five. That would be a five note away, perfect uh, fourth. And 12 minus five is seven, getting us to the seven note away, perfect fifth. So if I went the normal way from D to this G, that shape is a uh, five note away, perfect fifth. Therefore, the inverse, is then a seven is a seven note away perfect fifth so this way i hope i got that right this way five note away perfect fourth and this way seven note away perfect fifth all right clarification so then we're going to go then to the sixth so the sixth here is going to be boom so the sixth of a mixolydian is a nine note away major six nine note away major uh, <clears throat> six. Okay, and uh, how can I prove that? Because I can say going from the E, it'd be five, 10, 15, 12 minus 15, it's basically five minus two, five, four, three, it'd be a three note away uh, minor third. And 12 minus three would be a nine note away major six. So if I measured from the E, if I had that shape measuring from the E, that would be a three note away minor third. Therefore, if I measured from the bottom to the top, that would be a nine note away major six. Okay, and then let's go to this one. And this is the seventh, the seventh of a Mixolydian we know is a the funny one for the Mixolydian 
because it's a major mode and has a minor seven, which is a 10 note away minor seven. How can I prove that? Because if I measured from the F, five, 10, 15, 14, 12 minus 14 is basically four minus two, which would be two. So that would be a two note away, uh, which would be a major second. 12 minus two would be 10, and there's our 10 note away major seven. So if I looked at that shape going from top to bottom, F to G like we normally would, 10, that would be a two note away major second. But if I go the inverse, therefore, that would be a uh, 10 note away major seven. All right, that gets us back to then the octave. Now, have you ever asked yourself the question that why when someone says it's a crap load that that term seems to mean a lot, like a, like a lot of stuff, it's a crap load of stuff or something like that? Because, because like what if we were talking about like, like fly crap, you know? If you're talking about like fly crap, you wouldn't really think that because that usually doesn't pile up to a lot of crap if it's fly crap. I don't, I don't think I even would even see fly crap. So I think what's actually happening is whenever you hear that, we actually, we assume that it's a crap load like of, of cow crap or something. Just by default, we make that assumption, you know, because if we were, because if we were thinking if we were thinking about fly crap, it would it would mean if there's a crap load of stuff, it would be maybe just a little little bit of stuff because because the crap's really small because we're not talking about cows. You know what I mean? We're talking about flies here. So so yeah, there's a crap load. So so you could you know you could say something like like when there's not much, there's like a little teeny pile of something. You could say well there's a crap load of stuff right there. And people are like, you're exaggerating. It's like, no, I'm talking about like fly crap, which is, is uh, a crap load would be like a small amount unless there's like a whole lot of fly. Anyway, I, that's just something I've been pondering here. Let's try going the other way. Let's say we start from this one and we go backwards. So I'm going to say that we start from this G and then go back this way. All right. All right, so if we started on this one, we went back to here. We're going to the seventh, right? So we're here, and now we're going backwards. So we're so we're counting the 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 the, the lower note note is up top. We're counting from this G up, which is kind of backwards. So we're so we have our similar kind of situation here. So we're saying, I know if I go from the eighth back to the seventh, and it's mixolydian, the seventh has to be a ten note away minor seven. How can I prove that? Well, if I go from this one down, it would be five, four, three, two. That would be a two note away, which would be a major second. And therefore 10 minus two is 10, which would be the 10 note away major seven. So when I look at this shape, the first thing I think is measuring from the F, which is gonna be a, uh, a three note away. Uh, did I get that right? No, it'd be a two note away major second. Therefore, if I measured from the G up, that would be a 10 note away minor seventh. Okay, what if I went back to the sixth? What if I, what if I went back to the sixth? What if I did that? Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what would happen if you did that. Then that would be, because it's mixolydian, a nine note away major sixth. That would be a nine note away major sixth. And uh, uh, how can I count that? Because if I count it down, there'd be five, four, three. Therefore, going from the E, it would be a three note away uh, minor third. Three minus 12 or 12 minus three is nine. That's the nine note away major six. So if I measured from the E, which we normally would do, three note away minor third shape. But if I went the other way, therefore, inverse from the G to the E, nine note away major six. All right, let's bring it, let's bring it uh, back. I forgot which way I'm going again. I'm going to the D. Directions, man, directions. I go real fast, but I go the wrong way. That's worse. It's worse than going the right way slowly. Okay, take it easy. Just take it easy. Get the direct, get the direction properly orientated before you start sprinting 
sprinting down the road for crying out loud. All right, so now we're going to say we know that the fifth of the mixed lidding is a seven note away perfect fifth. Seven note away uh, perfect fifth. So how do I know that? Because the distance between these two is five notes away if I measured from the D, and that would be a five note away perfect fourth. Twelve minus five is a seven note, seven note away perfect fifth. So if I measured from the D at the top, that would be a five note away perfect fourth. And therefore, if I went from the bottom to the top from the G, which is what we're perspecting, our perspective, that would be a seven note away perfect fifth. All right. All right. Uh, let's then let's then go back to here to the is this the way I'm going again yeah the C let's go to the C then let's see what the C says I'll s see what the C says we're gonna say the a four the fourth of a mixolydian is a five note away perfect fourth so that's gonna be a five note away perfect fourth if I measure from the C it would be five ten nine eight seven which would be a seven note away uh, perfect fifth. 12 minus seven is five. That's the five note away perfect fourth. So if I saw the shape measured from the C, that's our good old seven note away perfect fifth. But if I do the inverse, therefore, five note away perfect fourth. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Talking about, talking about, talking about, talking about us. And then if I go back to the third, we're going to say the third of the mixolydian is a four note away major third. Four note away major third. I can count that by saying from B, five, ten, nine, eight. Therefore, that would be a nine note away, which would be a major six. Twelve minus nine is, th is four. Nine, wait a second. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What, what, what happened here? This would be five, ten. 9, 8. There would be an 8 note away, minor 6. 12 minus 8 is 4, and that's why I get the 4 note away uh, major 3rd. Uh, so if I went from here to here, which I normally would do, 8 note away, minor 6. But if I go from the bottom to the top, 4 note away, major 3rd. Okay, doke. Let's go to the prior one. And so now we're going to go to here. So that's going to be uh, <clears throat> the A is the, the second of the mixolydian. Um, we know that's a two note away major second. I can count that by going from the A, 510, 510. So going from the A would be a 10 note away, which would be a minor seventh. Inverse 12 minus 10 is two, two note away major second. So if I measured from the A, if I saw that shape, I'm usually thinking 10 note away major or minor seventh from the A, but the inverse therefore, which is what we're looking at, is the two note away major second. Okay, let's do the same repetitive process down here, looking at this A, but now comparing it to, well, let's look at this C first. Let's go in order. Let's look at this C back to the C because we're repeating, because it's the same set of strings on the top and bottom, different octave. So now I'm gonna go like, from this G here to this C there. So now this lower string is on top, so we're kind of going in the proper order now. And we know that if I'm on the C, that's gonna be the fourth, which is a five note away perfect fourth, which I can prove by going five, and then this would be 10 up here, 15, 16, 17, 17 minus 12, because there's only 12 notes, is basically seven minus two seven six five that's the five note away perfect fourth so if i go this way five note away perfect fourth wait, wait a sec am i hitting the right string so that don't sound right and the inverse of that then of course is going to be the seven note away perfect fifth if i went from the bottom to the top all right and then i'm going to go back and say all right let's go to like this one which is going to be the third. So I know the third of a mixolydian is a four note away major third. I can count that up by just saying from here, five, and this would be 10, 15, 16, 12, 16 minus 12 is basically six minus two, six, five, four, and that's the four note away major third. So going from here to here, four note away major third, 
12 minus 4 is uh, 12 minus 4 is 8 and that would be therefore this going this way is an 8 note away which would be a minor 6th all right let's go back to this one the A let's go to the A A A hoser let's go to this one we're gonna say this is going to be the second which for the mixolydian we know is a two note away major second which I can prove by saying this is gonna be five 10 or 10 up here 15 back one is 14 12 minus 14 it's basically 4 minus 2 which is 2 therefore this is a two note away major second not worrying about the octaves right we're gonna two note away major second and uh, 12 minus 2 is uh, is 10 so the inverse would be a 10 note away major 7 okay so that and then we're back to the octave you know this is ridiculous I feel like I, I feel like I'm taking advice from like nine asses it's totally asinine it's totally asinine you know put the cancel put a cancel together to get things done and and you know the council's not going to get anything done that's why we called the council an asinine council because it's a council of nine asses so it's an asset it's an, it's an asinine council anyways i usually try to play this kind of <clears throat> bluesy scale in the key of uh in the key of a is what i've been kind of practicing with to try to get because 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 this first shape i usually think is the minor so that's what i tend to play and i tend to play like a minor blues most of the time uh, and then i was trying to convert mainly this shape and see if i can convert it to uh, a, a major and again there's a couple different ways like I can think of it so I was kind of messing around uh, with how to think about that because because uh, one one interesting thing on the majors like you've got these when you look at a three notes per string I've got this so this which I'm, I'm gonna look at later more formally uh, those two like strings together, which allows you to do this shuffle pattern, but kind of reaches beyond, like I say, the four note uh, per string thing. So that's one thing I tend to, to visualize. And then uh, behind it here, you've got your third behind it, which is always something that kind of threw me off when I'm playing like in the minor mode, the third is right underneath, which is cool because you can, kind of do that kind of thing wait a sec uh, uh, wait no the third is right here and then underneath you've you've got your fifth right here right? so you've got the third and your fifth whereas when I do the major you've got your third back here which is hard to kind of shift back there to get that which is going to be obviously kind of like the flavor of the thing but you could of course reach up this way to pick it up which means you need a bit of a longer reach which isn't too bad but it always it always was a little bit more uh, of a of a reach for me and then again in this shape like it seems like people think of it in terms of like this is the i'm looking at it as a minor shape but then i'm going to bend this one so that i'm looking at this uh, minor uh, third and kind of converting it to the major third and then sliding up this one or bending this one which I can't bend as well on the acoustic but you can and then basically adding <laughs> adding the seven so here's that and then the major the shape I think is is this G is a seventh if I play it this way I get a seventh up here, which is a, a long reach, but you get a seventh right there. So the other way, I mean, the other way you can think of it is like a position number two that I think of it, which is like a, ma a major shape. Uh, and then, so that would, so then the third would be back here. It usually would be like that, but then you got to convert, if you think of it as a major shape, 
Mm. You got to say, okay, now I'm going to, but I'm going to make that the seventh. So I'm going to say it as a major, but flat the seventh. So normally it would be right there. But I'm going to flat, you know, the seventh, which basically means you're seeing it as a mixolydian in that case, right? So I could, so, so I could look at this as though I'm playing in the minor and shifting it, or I could look at it as though I'm playing the major, but then flatting the seven, or I could look at it as though I'm playing the mixolydian, just go right to the mixolydian. Or, and then I could also switch my mind to thinking about this three note first string. So I can do the shuffle pattern which is interesting. And if I think about this in terms of the major, this would be what I would call position two, that I flap the seven on, which means that back here I get position one. And I get this nice open A string. So you get this shuffle. is getting greasy.
been trying to kind of switch back and forth between that and the minor too. Like I can play the minor, minor A. To the major. And I've been experimenting with this to, to switch between. So if I was in like the minor. put that Spanish he thing switching from like this uh kind of bebop thing to the Spanish progression which is like in my a minor basically Mix that up with like this kind of bluesy beboppy thing.
I feel like those two should be able to mix up because you should be able to go from the major to the minor. Which is what I've been kind of messing around with a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> 